This is the clamp tank. Very strange little vehicle, but desperate times call for desperate measures. Uh, these guys are the armored version of the assault troops in terms of a forlorn hope. All volunteer crews, quite a few of them don't survive. It has a big booster tank on the top um, that helps it get a real burst of speed out of its steam engine, which is necessary, so that during that move, combat move, it gets the opportunity to do this. Rush out from cover and hopefully be successful in getting that clamp on the bottom of that tripod. Once done, the crew typically bails out. But once that tripod is clamped, it is really stuck as a uh, immobile target. And that's a very important point in this game because if that tripod can't move, it's going to be getting hit by barrel after barrel after barrel on the human side. Right, let's talk about the Tesla Lightning Gun Tank now. Uh, it is an interesting vehicle for you. So it carries its own extra generator to give it plenty of power. And if you don't move it, every turn you get to put a die next to it. And it's building up its charge. And it can build up to a maximum of three. And if it has three on the next turn, phew, and it doesn't use them, it goes back to zero and it has to build them back up again. But when I'm at maximum power, and I decide I want to fire my lightning cannon, my lightning gun, against this tripod, I get three attacks. And what's really cool about that is that I actually add all the results together to give me a very powerful charge. If I damage one of the targets, it's going to arc to the next target and so on within uh, a given range. Now, unfortunately, in this case, I'm supporting my Tesla tank with some human infantry, and it always goes to the next closest target. So in this case, it'll go to the tripod next, but if I do damage here and it arcs again, it'll go to the infantry. So I've got to be very careful. This is the Tesla mine laying tank, and its sole function is to drive across the battlefield and twice per movement phase, once in its first move, once in its second move, it lays out these mines behind it. Now why are these mines important is because tripods aren't really magnetic. And even burying mines under the surface hasn't proven to be very effective. So this is the mysterious Tesla mine. And for some reason it works in a proximity field. So if you get within three inches of a Tesla mine, boom, it goes up. And it has quite a devastating charge. Of course, there's no discretion within that mine of whether it's going to blow up a Martian or your human vehicle, all depending on who gets too close. It's worthwhile to spend a minute talking about scale and size. And uh, one of the questions we get, of course, is why are the vehicles so big? Well, that's a 15 millimeter Sherman, and that's the tripod. So that shows you the relationship between something that's a little more known. Everybody pretty much understands what a Sherman tank is, and that's a 15 mil one. Now, our Mark I Baldwin tanks are a bit bigger. And the reason why they're bigger is just like World War I tanks, for the most part, were larger than World War II tanks. But in this case, it's because it has a steam engine, it's very uh, much more stuff to contain and carry. Uh, it's larger, heavier, and certainly a lot slower than more modern World War II type tanks. This tank carries a single barrel. We have, of course, the Mark III that carries three barrels, but that still wasn't enough. And that's when you bring in these huge beasts, okay? This is a monitor, all right? And you can tell that this is a mighty big tank. Here it is again next to that 15 mil version of a Sherman. It's still a 15 millimeter tank, but it's more in portion to a 28 millimeter model. It's huge, big, huge, heavy, steam hulking beast with those moving side rods and lots of guns because in this game it's really about getting as many shots in on those tripods as you can get. So I'll turn the turret for a minute and we'll focus on this. It's got two on each side Sponson and two in the front. These are all low level guns but to a frontal shot it gives me four shots on that tripod just with my lower powered guns. But then I've got this big tripod killing naval gun mounted on it as well and it has a huge bonus. It's a very powerful beast of a machine and these come one to an element. All that size and that extra armor makes it a lot tougher for that heat ray to do it critical damage. But it's still soft in comparison to the technology of a Martian machine of course. And one last bit about size. Uh, this is the flame tank. Very rare actually. They wanted a heat gun for themselves, so this is as close as they could come, working with Baldwin and the DuPont Chemical Company. Look at the thing that that's pushing out. And there's the scale of a 15 millimeter guy next to it. And again, there's that 15 millimeter Sherman, just to give you a sense of size.